Hey everybody, this video is just a tad late by a few days for the release of 3.4, but wanted to go through a lot of the release information because there's a lot jam-packed into 3.4. I won't be able to touch all of it on the video, but I'll try to at least talk through all the high points and make sure that you know how to use some of the new features in Invoke. So let's get started. The first feature I'll cover is LCM. LCM is a new technique for optimizing and making more efficient the diffusion process using a new scheduler called the LCM scheduler. This reduces the number of steps needed to generate an image and ultimately allows for a lot of the cool things that you've been seeing on the internet recently. Now, before we dive into LCM, I want to show you kind of the quality of a model before we use the LCM scheduler. While the LCM scheduler does do a great job at making the generation process extremely efficient, you do lose some detail. And I think it's good to highlight those quality losses because you're gonna to wanna to use this very specifically in your workflow. Uh, so we'll go ahead and generate four images here. Uh, this is just a normal generation. Uh, we'll mix up our seed and see what we get. Now we've got four various pictures of our cyborg king. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to change the settings for LCM. There are a couple of things that you'll need to do. Uh, we're going to change the CFG scale to 1.2 or so. Uh, we're going to change the scheduler to the new LCM scheduler. Uh, and what we're going to need to do is add the LCM Laura. Now the LCM Laura can be downloaded at the latent consistency hugging face repo. I'll make sure to include a link in the details. And this Laura works with both SDXL and SD 1.5. I'm going to turn that LCM Laura up to about one. And I can show you a couple of the different results here as we tweak the CFG scale, just so that you can compare and contrast some of those differences. Uh, lastly, the thing I need to do is reduce the steps anywhere from four to eight will be fine and you'll likely get better detail at six. So let's just go ahead and do six. Uh, and we'll generate four more images with the same seed. Uh, what we're gonna see is the quality is gonna be a little bit different, but this thing is about to go really, really fast. So in comparing the two sets of generations, we do lose a lot of the cyborg elements of this as well. Um, you'll notice that these look a lot more like regular people in robot armor. Well, I don't know exactly why that is. I have some hypotheses. I think that it's probably related to the CFG scale. So I did mention that I'll show kind of what happens when we change the CFG scale. We can either go up to 1.3 or down to 1.1. And we'll just notice that this changes the adherence to the prompt. There's some Minor variations here, a lot of the core elements are the same, but if we do anything higher, let's do just as comparison. So you can see as we increase the CFG scale, we added more and more adherence to the prompt, but once you start to hit two or three in the CFG scale, you start to get some very interesting uh, saturation and hue adjustments. So ultimately I'd recommend staying in the lower ranges of the CFG scale. I'll switch back to my full step scheduler and we'll talk about some of the other new features in 3.4. In 3.4, we've seen the return of a simple high resolution fix Big thank you to contributor Paul Curry, who helped make this a reality. Uh, this feature is available on SD 1.5 models. When you turn it on, what it's going to do is go through the two-step high resolution fix process of increasing the size of an original generation at the model's original training size of 512 by 512 to whatever width and height you end up selecting. So if I end up selecting uh, 1280, which normally wouldn't work very well, on an SD 1.5 model. What this feature is gonna do is ensure that it's generating the core composition at a lower res and then upscaling that using ESR GAN or a straight resize and then running that denoising process at that higher resolution. 
Uh, so we'll go ahead and generate our uh, Cyborg King just to see what that looks like. As you can see, none of the repeating patterns that you would see it generating this res. High resolution fix is a great way to get larger images pretty simply from the linear UI without having to go into the workflow. In 3.4, the control net feature and the T to I adapter feature are now not mutually exclusive. That is to say, you can use both at the same time um, and have a control net and a T to I adapter uh, running on the same generation. So in this case, I'll use the T to I color adapter uh, we'll go ahead and use uh, this image for a canny. We'll just increase the threshold here. You know. And we'll use the color, this this kind of like lime green color from one of the weird generations through, through LCM. And what that's going to do is run the color processor on it, uh, and we'll pass that into the color adapter for T. And why not, since we've got our uh, high res fix on at 1280, let's just run it at this higher res. I'll turn random back on. I have 12 canny input, and when that canny map got upscaled into the 1280 by 1280. Uh, it created this kind of like pixelated edge. Uh, so this is actually a function of the canny control adapter causing some of these jagged edges in the image. It's a good thing to be mindful of. And one way that you can solve for that is to decrease uh, the instep percentage if you ever have this happen. Uh, I'll just run this again so you can see this. And what that'll do is it'll stop this control conditioning from affecting these edges towards the end of the generation. This essentially means at the end of the generation process, we're not using this anymore. And so it can kind of correct for some of those errors. See, now we've got a nice clean edges here. Now the next set of features that we're gonna cover are gonna be viewed in the workflow editor. Uh, this is where we've added some new nodes that can be used for more advanced users. The first feature I'll highlight is multi-image IP adapters. Now, inside of the linear UI, you have the ability to add multiple IP adapters. And I'll just go back here to look at this. So we can add multiple IP adapters. And typically what you're doing here is you're taking different concepts and putting these in the IP adapter and kind of blending those concepts together by decreasing the weights. We covered this in one of the recent videos. However, in the workflow editor, you'll actually have the ability to pass in multiple images to the same IP adapter. The name that this is kind of taken on in the community is Instant Loras. Uh, this is something that we added to invoke a few weeks ago, but just now covering on the video. And effectively what this allows you to do is pass in multiple images of the same concept into the same IP adapter so that it tries to tease apart kind of the average of those images, the general gist of the concept you're passing in, and then is blending that into the image. So in this case, we actually have the ability to do multiple images into an IP adapter and multiple IP adapters with multiple images. So we can actually do this notion of blending two concepts together quite easily. So in this case, I'm going to drop uh, these four spiders that I've generated into my workflow. So we'll go through an SDXL. And then maybe I'll take uh, these two out and we'll use these kind of concept art sketches here of this yeti looking creature and i'm just switching around the ip adapter models that i prefer to use for this uh, all of them work uh, but again make sure to take a look at previous videos to get a better understanding of what each of those ip adapters does so in this case i want my spider concept to be up at probably 0.6 update my models here and then we need to update our prompts right we'll go ahead and uh, generate four of these and see what we get it's a lot of preview image here as well and if you ever get black images like that with sdxl you know you need to update your vae 
I forgot to include that in the workflow, so I just went ahead and updated that there. And we'll give this another shot. So if I want to tweak around how much weight each of these things is being given, let's say, for example, we'll take our spiders down to 0.4. Uh, and increase these kind of concept art beasts over here up to about 0.65. When we regenerate with this, we should see a massive shift in the weight of the concepts in the image. This is a great tool for blending concepts together. Now, obviously, because these are such different images, we're getting some pretty wild creations when we jam these together. These are like abominations. Uh, but you can imagine what this might look like if you, for example, introduce uh, two concepts together and then blend them with a little bit of a lighter touch. So uh, kind of showed the, the worst case scenario there. Now let's go ahead and do this uh, with maybe some of our new gentlemen that we created here. And we'll keep this maybe about 0.45 for the weight of this concept here. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is maybe throw in some of these elements. And we'll turn this down to 0.35. So we've got our Cyborg King. We've got this kind of robotic concept. The robotic concept down here is about 0.35. Uh, and what I'm going to do now is change this to a photo. And what you'll notice is that despite the fact that I've got a photo in my positive prompt, I'm still getting a lot of this artistic style from my input images. And again, this comes da back down to the weight of the concept. So this is getting a fair bit of the painterly brushstroke uh, concept from these images. If I wanted to tone that down a bit, I can bring that down to 0.3 or so. And if I want to bring the concept uh, this kind of like robotic piece up a bit, what we're going to find is that uh, we should still get a pretty focus concept of this cyborg king, but it's going to shift the style a lot more towards this uh, kind of like realistic look. We still have a little bit of that video game look and feel, but it's a lot less pronounced. You can see how the prompt and each of these concepts that has been kind of merged together is playing out in the resulting image. Uh, Multi-image IP adapters are super cool. You can blend as many concepts as you want together, although obviously the more you have, the more likely that you're going to fight to get a coherent image. You might end up with like a lot of those abominations that I created early on. And just to break down this workflow, if you can't, for whatever reason, download the example file that I'll attach, these images are flowing into a collect node. The collect node is being passed into this. The IP adapter is being passed into a collect node with the other IP adapter, and both of those are being passed into the IP adapter input on the denoise latency node. Everything else is a pretty standard graph for SDXL. Uh, so again, this is just kind of passing in these new conditioning concepts into the denoise latency node. A couple of other smaller features that I'll highlight, the VAE metadata for any generations can now be recalled. Thanks to Stefan Tobler, the contributor who brought that in. You'll notice that the color picker inside of the unified canvas now has RGBA value fields that was contributed by Rohinish 404. Huge thank you to you. And there are a ton of other contributors who also help to make 3.4 possible from bug fixes to translations. Please make sure to go check out the release notes to, so you can see all of the contributors who helped out with the release. I will also call out in the settings for Invoke, the language dropdown uh, has a number of languages that contributors have translated Invoke into, but a huge shout out to the folks who've helped 
complete our Dutch, Italian, and Chinese translations. Those three are almost fully complete translations of the Invoke AI app. Other updates in 3.4 include a lot of speed increases, especially for LoRa's and other text encoder loading times. There have also been some backend updates that make certain functions in the graph in the engine more efficient. We've got even more updates coming soon. So stay tuned, like, subscribe, and make sure to jump into the Discord and join the community. We'll see you there.